Welcome students. Today's topic is Tools and Techniques of Recombinant DNA Technology. The main objectives of this lecture are to understand the role of restriction endonucleases involved in recombinant DNA technology, to know about the types and utility of vectors used in recombinant DNA technology, to understand the principles and utility of gel electrophoresis, southern blotting and molecular probes in isolation and cloning of gene of interest. Then lastly, construction of recombinant DNA and its transformation in suitable host cells for cloning of gene of interest. Gene cloning is a technique of getting thousands of identical copies of a single gene of interest. For this purpose, the gene of interest is inserted into a vector molecule, which in turn is transformed into a host cell such as bacteria. The bacterial cell carrying the gene of interest is allowed to multiply on a suitable medium to get colony of thousands of bacterial cells, each carrying the gene of interest. In this way, we get thousands of copies of the same gene. Gene cloning can also be achieved by polymerase chain reaction which is also called a PCR, in which the specific DNA fragment of interest is amplified with the help of PCR machine without the use of vector and the host cell. A recombinant DNA molecule is produced by joining together two or more different DNA segments such as a vector and the gene of interest. The vector plus gene of interest is called recombinant DNA and the steps involved in creation of recombinant DNA are collectively called recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering. On the other hand, the steps concerned with transformation of a suitable host with recombinant DNA and multiplication of the transformed host is called DNA cloning or gene cloning. Recombinant DNA technology is often used as a synonym for gene cloning. A rather popular term called genetic engineering is used for all our activities in gene cloning. The first recombinant molecules were made by Paul Berg, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen in 1972-73. In general, recombinant DNA technology involves three major steps. For example, number one, isolation of gene of interest number two, creation of recombinant DNA and number third, transformation of recombinant DNA into a suitable host and it is cloning. Now let us discuss first isolation of gene of interest. The primary requirement for recombinant DNA technology is the isolation of a specific gene of interest in pure form separated from all other genes or DNA fragments of the host organism. An E. coli, for example, carries nearly 4,000 different genes, whereas humans have more than 35,000 genes. Restriction digest of these genomes will generate thousands of DNA fragments. So, identifying a particular fragment carrying gene of interest is one of the most crucial tasks in recombinant DNA technology. Once a gene has been isolated and cloned, there is no limit to the information that can be obtained about the structure and function of that gene. Isolation of gene of interest or a specific DNA fragment involves several tools and techniques such as restriction endonucleases, gel electrophoresis, DNA libraries, southern blotting and molecular probes. Now what are restriction endonucleases? Restriction endonucleases, also called restriction enzymes, are a class of enzymes that cut DNA at specific sites called restriction sites or recognition sites. Some of the commonly used restriction enzymes are ECOR1, BAMH1, HIND3, HE3, etc. The discovery and characterization of type second restriction endonucleases led to the award of Nobel Prize to Arbor. Hamilton Smith and Daniel Nathans in 1978. The most important characteristics of type second restriction enzymes which make them suitable for gene cloning are 
number one all type second restriction enzymes are found in bacteria only but not in any eukaryote on the other hand restriction sites are present in prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic genomes the isolation of specific gene therefore depends upon which restriction sites are falling on either side of a gene of interest for example if there are eco r1 sites around a gene such a gene will be isolated by digesting the dna with eco r1 enzyme and so on number 2 the recognition sites or restriction sites of almost all restriction endonucleases are four base pair six base pair or eight base pair long palindromic sequences with a few exceptions a palindrome is a sequence in which both strands have the same nucleotide sequence but in antiparallel orientation that is sequence in lower strand is the mirror image of the upper strand majority of the restriction enzymes cut their recognition sites in such a way so as to generate single stranded overhangs called sticky ends when similar sticky ends are generated in the target dna and vector these sticky ends are complementary to each other so that when the gene of interest is mixed with the vector dna their complementary sticky ends base pair with each other and in this way the gene of interest is fitted within the vector to form a recombinant dna number 4 some restriction enzymes however generate blunt ends that is without any single stranded overhangs in such cases sticky ends can be artificially generated by the enzyme terminal transferase or by addition of linkers or adapters on both sides of the target dna there are some other enzymes which are also important in recombinant dna technology for example dna ligase reverse transcriptase tag polymerase etc dna ligase this enzyme is also called molecular glue and seals the nicks that remain in the recombinant dna molecule the role of this enzyme is to catalyze the formation of phosphodiester bond in five bond between 5 dash phosphate and 3 dash oh of two adjacent nucleotides when a gene of interest is inserted into a vector molecule then reverse transcriptase is another enzyme this enzyme is used to produce complementary dna that is cdna from mrna for making cdna library terminal transferase this enzyme is used in generation of sticky ends by adding nucleotides at 3 dash oh ends of a double stranded dna blunt ended dna molecule tag polymerase it is a kind of dna polymerase used in pcr for synthesis of dna at high temperature for creation of a recombinant dna a specific restriction endonuclease for example eco r1 is used to cut the whole genome of an organism so that thousands of dna fragments are generated each fragment has a sticky end of eco r1 site the same enzyme is used to cut the vector dna to generate similar sticky ends however before creating a recombinant dna molecule the next major task is to identify and isolate the gene of interest from these thousands of dna fragments generated by restriction digest now let us discuss gel electrophoresis this technique separates and purifies fragments of dna rna and proteins on the basis of their size and electrical charge the dna has a net negative charge due to the oxygen atoms associated with the phosphate group joining nucleotides on both dna strands therefore if dna molecules are placed in an electric field they will migrate or move towards the positive electrode in order to separate fragments of different sizes the electrophoresis migration is performed through a gel as a support medium two gel systems are widely used in recombinant dna technology agarose gel electrophoresis and number 2 polyacryl amide gel electrophoresis during gel electrophoresis 
smaller molecules migrate at higher speed than larger molecules. This helps in separation of DNA molecules according to their size. After gel electrophoresis of DNA, the gel is stained by ethidium bromide and if placed over an ultraviolet illuminator, bright pink bands are seen representing DNA fragments of different lengths that have migrated during the electrophoresis. Now, the next step is to identify a specific band from the gel carrying the gene of interest. This is achieved by another technique called southern blotting. Southern blotting is a technique of transferring DNA molecules from agarose gel to a solid support such as nitrocellulose paper or nylon membrane followed by hybridization with a specific probe. The technique was invented by E. M. Southern in 1975 and hence the name Southern blotting. During Southern blotting, the DNA molecules in the gel move upward by the capillary action of the buffer and come in contact with the nitrocellulose membrane where they get attached. The DNA fragments transferred on the membrane occupy the same positions as in the master gel. A molecular probe is a DNA segment complementary to the gene of interest created from a specific mRNA or isolated from a related organism or artificially synthesized and is radioactively or fluorescently labeled at one end. After southern blotting, the labeled probe is used to hybridize with a specific DNA fragment. The location of DNA fragment that hybridizes with the probe can be detected by autoradiography. The identified spot is then matched with the original gel and the gene of interest is thus isolated for cloning. Now, what are DNA libraries? The isolation of gene of interest is the most critical setup in recombinant DNA technology. One of the easiest strategies for isolation of any gene of interest is to first construct a genomic or cDNA library. What is genomic library now? A DNA library is a collection of DNA fragments representing all genes of a particular genome in the form of recombinant vectors. Each recombinant vector present in a host cell and each host cell in turn present in the form of a bacterial colony or plague. For construction of a library, genomic DNA of an organism is subjected to restriction digest with a specific enzyme, for example, ECOR1, thus generating thousands of DNA fragments, each fragment carrying a specific gene. These DNA fragments are then inserted into a suitable vector to create recombinant DNA molecules. The recombinant vectors each carrying a specific gene are then transferred to suitable bacterial cells. The transformed bacteria are then cultured and after some time thousands of bacterial colonies are produced, each colony representing a specific gene. In this way all genes of an organism are in the form of bacterial colonies and is known as DNA library. Once cell DNA library is available, any gene of interest can be isolated by using southern blotting technique. The preparation of DNA library depends on the type of restriction enzyme used, the size of DNA fragment is generated and the choice of the vector. For smaller genomes like prokaryotes, plasmids are used as vectors, whereas for larger genomes like eukaryotes, bacteriophage lambda and cosmids are used as vectors for construction of DNA library. Then what is cDNA library? A cDNA library represents expressed part of the genome. The mRNA isolated from a specific tissue or at a specific developmental stage is first converted into complementary DNA or cDNA with the help of an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. The cDNAs are then inserted into suitable vectors to create recombinant DNA molecules. The recombinant DNAs are then transformed into suitable host bacterial cells. The bacterial cells carrying a specific recombinant DNA are then cultured to produce a set of bacterial colonies, each colony representing a specific gene in the form of a cDNA and is thus called a cDNA library. After the gene of interest has been isolated, the next setup is to insert this gene into a suitable vector in order to create a recombinant DNA molecule. 
a vector is an agent that can carry the gene of interest into a host cell in which it is capable of replication. The characteristic features of an ideal vector are number one, it should be able to replicate autonomously in the host cell that is it must have its own origin of replication. Number two, the vector should be reasonably small in size for easy insertion of foreign gene and its transformation into the host cell. Number third, the vector should have suitable marker genes or selectable markers that allow selection of transformed host cells. Number four, a vector must contain suitable restriction sites for as many restriction enzymes as possible so that the foreign gene is inserted without disturbing any essential function of the vector. In gene cloning, the choice of a vector depends upon many factors. For example, size of the DNA to be cloned, then types of restriction sites present, then so the host species into which the gene of interest is cloned. And finally, the efficiency of cloning vectors that is the number of copies of a vector in a host cell. The most widely used vectors in the recombinant DNA technology belong to plasmids, cosmids and bacteriophages. Now what are plasmid vectors? Plasmids are small circular autonomously replicating double stranded DNA molecules found in bacteria. Plasmid vectors used in recombinant DNA technology are small up to 10 kilo base and often high copy number per cell. DNA fragments from 8 to 10 kilo base in size can be cloned in plasmids. Some artificially designed plasmids include for example PBR322, PUC1819, etc. Now let us discuss PBR322. PBR322 was the first artificially constructed vector. It is named after the scientists known as Bolivar and Rodridge who constructed it in 1977. It is 4362 base pair in size. It has an origin of replication derived from call E1 plasmid. It exists in about 100 copies per cell. It has two selectable marker genes such as ampicillin resistant gene and tetracycline resistant gene. Several restriction sites are present within the antibiotic resistant genes. For example, BAMH1, SAL1, PST1, PVU1, etc. If a gene of interest is inserted within BAMH1 or SAL1 site, it will inactivate the tetracycline resistant gene. This is called insertional inactivation. The host cell carrying such a recombinant plasmid cannot grow in presence of tetracycline in the medium. In this way, bacterial cells carrying recombinant cells are selected by their inability to grow in a medium carrying tetracycline. Non-recombinants are tetracycline resistant and will form colonies in such a medium. Similarly, insertion of foreign gene with an ampicillin resistance gene will inactivate in it and recombinants are selected in the same way as in case of tetracycline resistant gene. Now what are PUC vectors? These plasmid vectors have been developed at the University of California thus named as PUC, P for plasmid, U for university, C for California, they are called PUC vectors. These are small around 2 to 8 kilo base in size. They are high copy number plasmids. Besides other features of PBR322, PUC vectors carry a multi-cloning site called polylinker and the lac Z gene. A polylinker contains several restriction sites so that gene of interest can be fitted within any restriction site. lac Z gene helps in selection of recombinant cells against non-recombinant cells. The polylinker is actually present within the lac Z gene of PUC vector so that insertion of foreign gene will inactivate the lac Z gene. The recombinant bacteria will therefore produce white colonies against blue colonies in case of non-recombinants. PUC vectors are always in pairs. In each pair, the only difference is the orientation of polylinker. Examples are PUC 18 and 19. Similarly, PUC 118 and 119, etc. 
the characteristics features of PUC 18, 19 are number one, it is derived from PBR 322 and is 2686 base pair that is 2.7 kilo base approximately in size. It has high copy number and about 500 to 700 per cell. It has an origin of replication and epicillin resistant gene. It has a lag Z gene. The polylinker contains several restriction sites and is fitted within the lag Z gene. The recombinants produce white colonies as compared to non recombinants which produce blue colonies on X gel medium. The polylinker is in different orientation in PUC 18 and PUC 19. Second category of vectors are bacteriophage vectors. Bacteriophages are viruses that specifically infect bacteria. Most phages perform the lytic cycle where phage DNA replicates independently of the bacterial chromosome. Some phages perform lysogenic cycle where phage DNA integrate with the host chromosome and thus multiplies with the later as prophage. The infection of phages results in the formation of plaques rather than colonies. A plaque is a lawn of bacterial colony in which bacterial cells have been lysed. Bacteriophage vectors can accommodate 20 to 25 kilo base of foreign DNA. Majority of the eukaryotic genes fall within this size range. Therefore, phage is an ideal vector for cloning of majority of the genes. Two widely used phages in recombinant DNA technology are lambda phage and M13 phage. A lambda phage has 48,502 base pair long linear double stranded DNA. It contains origin of replication, genes for lytic and lysogenic cycle, and single stranded 12 bases long complementary ends, which are cohesive ends on each side. These are called cos sites. A number of lambda based vectors have been designed for their use in the cloning. A large central segment more than 15 kilo base of lambda genome concerned with lysogenic cycle has been removed, thus making the lambda phage non-lysogenic. Since a genome size of about 49 kilo base is must for packaging of lambda phage, it means that as much as 20 kilo base of DNA, that is gene of interest, can be cloned in the newly designed lambda vector. Two types of lambda based vectors have been designed. Number one, lambda insertion vectors. A lambda insertion vector possesses at least one unique restriction site into which new DNA can be inserted. Insertion vectors can accommodate only 6 to 10 kilo base of DNA. Examples are lambda GT10, lambda GT11, and lambda ZAP. Number two is the lambda replacement vector. In a replacement vector, the large central non-essential part has been replaced by a stuffer DNA fragment that is non-essential DNA. The stuffer DNA is flanked by two restriction sites, one on either side, so that if digested by the same enzyme, the stuffer DNA can be removed and replaced by foreign gene. A DNA fragment of 20 to 25 kilo base can be accommodated in a replacement vector. Examples are lambda GEM11 and lambda GEM12, etc. Then another phage type is M13 phage vector. M13 genome is small single stranded DNA around 6.4 kilo base in size containing 10 closely packed genes. The first setup in the construction of M13 cloning vector was to introduce the lag Z gene within a 507 nucleotide intergenic region giving rise to the M13 vector called M13MP1, which forms blue plaques on X gel. That is, recombinants will be white plaques against blue plaques in non-recombinants. Later on, by in vitro mutagenesis, an eco R1 site has been created at the start of lag Z gene, giving rise to M13 MP2 vector. Thereafter, some advanced M13 vectors such as M13 MP7 and M13 MP18 have been developed by adding 
پولی لنکر اینڈ لیک زڈ سلیکشن میتھڈس ایم تھرٹین از اسپیشلی یوز ٹو گیٹ سنگل سٹرینڈڈ کلون ڈی این اے فار ڈی این اے سیکوینسنگ ایکسپیریمنٹس تھرڈ کیٹگری آف ویکٹرس از دا کاسمٹ ویکٹرس یوز ان رکامن ڈی این اے ٹیکنالوجی اے کاسمٹ ویکٹر از اے کمبینیشن آف دا پلازمٹ اینڈ بیکٹیریو فیج لیمڈا دا ایسینشل فیچرس آف اے کاسمٹ ویکٹر آر اٹ از اے سمال فائیو ٹو سیون کلو بیس سرکولر ڈی این اے اٹ کنٹینز این آرجن آف ریپلیکیشن سلیکٹیبل مارکرس اینڈ ریسٹرکشن سائٹس فرام پلازمٹ ویکٹر اٹ کنٹینز کاس سائٹس فرام فیج لیمڈا نیڈڈ فار پیکیجنگ ان ٹو فیج پارٹیکلز کاسمٹس آر یوز ٹو کلون لارج ڈی این اے مالیکیولز اپ ٹو فورٹی فائیو کلو بیس ان سائز دیر فور لارج جینز کین بی کلونڈ اونلی ان کاسمٹس کاسمٹس کین ریپلیکیٹ لائک پلازمٹ ان دا ہوسٹ بیکٹیریل سیل اینڈ پیکیجڈ ان ٹو فیج پارٹیکلز وین کاس سائٹس آر کلیوڈ بائی اینڈو نیوکلیز اینزائم دس اے کاسمٹ ایکٹس لائک اے پلازمٹ ایز ویل ایز اے فیج ایگزامپلز آف کاسمٹس آر پی جے بی پی ڈبلیو ای سپر کاس ون ایٹسیٹرا دین تھرڈ میجر سٹیپ ان ریکامن ڈی این اے ٹیکنالوجی از دا ٹرانسفارمیشن آف ریکامن ڈی این اے ان ٹو ہوسٹ سیل دس پروسیس از ایکچولی کالڈ ایز جین کلوننگ جورنگ ٹرانسفارمیشن دا ریکامن ویکٹرس آر مکسڈ ود دا ہوسٹ بیکٹیریل سیلز سو دیٹ ایچ ہوسٹ سیل ٹیکس اپ اے ریکامن ڈی این اے مالیکیول If phages are used as vectors, then the recombinant phage particles are allowed to infect E. coli host cells. These phages then transfer their recombinant DNA into the host cells. After transformation, the host cells carrying recombinant vectors are selected by either antibiotic resistance test or by lag Z selection method. The host cells selected are then cultured on suitable medium where these host cells multiply to produce a colony or plague of thousands of bacterial cells or phages, each cell carrying a gene of interest. In this way, the gene of interest is cloned into thousands of copies. Now, as I earlier said, the second way of cloning a gene of interest is using a PCR machine that is popularly called as polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase chain reaction is a revolutionary technology of cloning gene of interest in a much faster way than recombinant DNA technology. In this technique, the DNA isolated from the donor organism is taken in a PCR tube. The tube also contains all the four nucleotides in appropriate ratios plus the enzyme tag polymerase. This enzyme catalyzes DNA synthesis at high temperature. The most important requirement of PCR is a pair of suitable primer sequences which bind at either end of the two strands of gene of interest. The PCR tube is then fitted in the PCR machine after few cycles for example, 20 to 25 cycles of PCR reaction, millions of copies of gene of interest are produced. That is all about today's lecture. In this lecture, we have learned three major events in recombinant DNA technology. Number one, gene of interest is isolated by restriction digest of genomic DNA followed by gel electrophoresis, southern blotting and use of molecular probe. Number two, the isolated gene of interest is then inserted into a suitable vector depending upon the size of the gene, type of restriction sites and the selection method present in the vector, etc. This gives rise to a recombinant DNA. Number third, the recombinant vector is then transformed into a suitable host cell such as E. coli. The transformed host cells are cultured on a suitable medium. With the multiplication of host cell, the gene of interest also multiplies and in this way we get thousands of copies of gene of interest, a process called gene cloning. Thank you very much.